Hey everybody, this is Oliver for AE Tots. I'm happy to be here and um, I want to create with you this effect. Once again. So as you can see, we will pretty much blow th some things up. So let's start. We are not starting in After Effects, but we are starting in Photoshop. And for this, I've lost my PSD. There is it. This is the result you are going into After Effects. How are you doing it? Uh, well, with the project file, there are two photos. Um, one photo is this one of a pretty yellowish corridor, and uh, the other one is this one with a dwarf in a gym or wherever. And um, maybe you're asking, oh. Uh, Okay, what should I do with those photos? It's very easy. Um, you just want to create this. You want those doors over here to fit in this floor element. How are you doing this? Pretty easy. The first thing you want to do is to match the colors of the footage. So first of all, with uh, this door JPEG selected, you go to image, adjust and you go to, I think in, in the English version it's the same color, I hope so, but it's down here and the interface looks like this. What you can do here, it, it, it gives you a pretty good start when you try to match colors from uh, different photos and uh, that's the way it works. So this is your source uh, you want to have for the color correction, in this case the corridor. Ooh, pretty yellow, but uh, that's exactly what we wanted. Said OK. The next thing I did is with the pen tool cutting out those edges just around here. You can be as sloppy as you like, this is just a tutorial. And um, then I copied this layer into this one. Um, you might be asking, okay, it has a different perspective, how does this work? It's pretty easy. Um, with the door layer selected, you press Command T for free transformation, right click, and go to Distort, I think it's in English. No, that's not even right. Distort. And with this tool, you can pretty mess around with your, with your picture until it fits just right in here. And um, yeah, the last thing you want to do is to color correct it, right? What I did, did here is just uh, I pulled in uh, the red and greens, uh, so we have a real white and a real black in this, in this image. So when you've done all this stuff, all you need to do is cut out the back of this corridor layer and also the uh, transparent parts of the of the windows. So just take again a mask selection or a pen tool, whatever you like, and then start uh, cutting out those areas. That's pretty much it. Uh, then you save it as a PSD file. PSD is important to preserve the transparency, so make sure you're going to do you're going to do this. And um, see you in a second in After Effects. Okay, now we are in After Effects and I already imported the PSD file we just created and make sure you import this one as a footage file, not as a composition and I also got this uh, video of an explosion running around the floor and uh, this comes from Andrew Kramer's video co-pilot and I think it's the action movie Essentials number one collection It's an awesome product, cheers Andrew and um, yeah, I just created a new composition. Check this. Uh, it's 9020 by 1080, that's okay. And uh, square pixel, 5 seconds long, that's all good. Good to go. We grab our PSD file and let's make a copy by pressing Ctrl D, sorry. And uh, we name this um, main floor. Be creative. And this one BG for background. Let's make them both 3D layers. Hit P for position. Oh, sorry. 
hit P for position and move the BG layer back one pixel, just one pixel. Okay, make it invisible. Now grab your main floor layer and choose the pen tool. Let's zoom in. Because now we want to cut out the doors. Make a point here. Down here. Over there. I'll do this a little bit sloppy right now, just uh, for the sake of time. I'm sorry. Um, switch it off. One more point here. One more here. You do this better, I think so. Okay. Okay, I call it here. And switch back to subtract. When you switch the background on again, hit S for scale and scale it way down. Too much. Just like so. Not looking too bad. And um, now duplicate your main floor layer once again. Command duplicate. Rename this door. Select the layer, go to layer, precompose and let's call it doors. Move all attri attributes, that's alright. Okay, next step, we create a camera. We don't, we don't want uh, depth of field, we can't use this here. Uh, 35mm, okay. Alright. Now unfold this layer, make it 3D as well, open it up, bam, there you go. This isn't looking like a door, right? Go on and change this in a sec, hit M for mask, and uh, change the mode to air. That's even more a door, I think. Duplicate it again, call one of them left door, the other one right door. Okay, switch one off, select the mask, and now double click, move this up here. Okay, switch it off for a sec so I can see what I'm doing. And just cut out one piece of the door. All right, switch it on again. Hide it, and now go for the other one. Double click on the mask, skip down, switch it off again. I'm sorry. Oops. Up a bit. Okay, I'll leave it here for now. Change it to L. Now we have our two doors. Um, now we have to precompose them again. Layer precompose left door and move all attributes and th same thing for right door all right now uh, hit the y key for the pen behind tool is over here because we have to move the anchor points of the layers so with the right door selected grab the anchor point and move it just down there all right same for the left door. There you go. Yeah, maybe we we'll move it down. That's better. Great. All right. Moving on. Make this both 3D layers as well. 
go to the very beginning of the com, reveal the position properties, get a keyframe, go to uh, maybe one, one second, we will see. And we do the same thing for the rotation. Rotation. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, we will change those web values in a bit. First of all, let's hit back into the main com. So what we want to do is to pull the camera back and um, also let the, let the doors fly off. Okay, first let's animate our camera. Go to the very beginning. Hit P for position. Keyframe. Go to uh, maybe 12 frames. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Hit C for the camera tool and pull back. Okay, let's make this a proper value. Minus 3600, that's looking good. And make them both. Oh no, I'm sorry. This one. Right click on the. Damn. Right click on the keyframe? What's happening? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Make this an ease out and this ease in. So we have a slightly smooth transition. Okay, now the tricky part. You select your DOS timeline, grab it over here, and pull it down until this blue box appears and just leave it there. Okay, now above here, go to new composition or new viewport, whatever and pull it to the right. So we have two viewports next to each other. Hit the lock for the main composition, select the DOS timeline. It's already locked. Okay, that's good. Alright, so in the main timeline, it's getting a little tricky now. Go to the last keyframe from the camera animation and uh, now jump back to the doors timeline, also to the very last keyframe. Let me close this one a little bit down. And let's just animate for now one door in the Z position. So select the left door, be sure you have the right keyframe here, and pull it back. Way back, way back. Let's see. Just your off frame. A little bit more than the 3600, I think. Alright, and we do the same thing for the right door. EPA 8. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm sorry, I just have both keyframes selected. Euro. Bam. Okay, it's looking a little weird that they are so close together, so we have to, of course, animate the rotation and um, we want to pull them the X axis a bit and also the Y. Move it over. The right to the right, the left to the left. Let's have a look. Even better. Let's have a look here. Okay, for my chase it can be a little bit more to the sides. Let's have a look. Yep, that's better. Alright. Now let's have a look. Are they already? Yeah, we'll do it for now. 
no photo rotation. Well, that's just random values. We'll see how this looks like. Take a look. Oh, cool. That's not too bad. All right. I like it. And the same thing for this one. Bam. That's nice. I think it, this is the best result I've ever got. That's that's great. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> okay. That's a good point to save our project. Save it on the uh, last doors, I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so we have our camera animation and we have our doors flying apart. Nice. So we can close one of the viewports and we can move the timeline back as well. Cool. Oh, make sure you unlock this. Always forget doing this. <laughs> okay, what we also want to do is to um, create a window inside these doors which uh, contains some glass blowing away. For creating this, in the project window, select the left door composition, duplicate it, Command D, and call it left shitter. Same thing for the right door, duplicate and rename it to right shitter. And import those. Oh no. First duplicate the door layers, move them right up, select it, and now with the Alt key selected, choose the right shutter comp and drag it with the Alt key down here. Once again for the left door, be sure you select the layer, hold ALT and drag the left shutter comb just on it. What this does is, um, when you look here, you have those keyframes and um, with a duplicated layer, when, when you drag it on, it keeps all the keyframes, it just ch changes the, the, the footage you're pulling in. It's an awesome function. Okay, open your left chatter com and go to MM for the mask properties and um, create a new layer, new solid, call it glass, make it a pure white. Okay, pull it back. And now draw a mask into the new glass solid. And you have to orientate by the boundaries of that window here. Okay, good. Hide the layer. And now I'm going to apply the shitter effect. So if you'd like to know how all the English effects are called in German. There you go. So change uh, the view to rendered. And now for the style of the particles or the shards that are blowing away, choose glass. Repetitions maybe, uh, I don't know, 150. Extrusion depth around uh, 0, 0, 0,05. Okay. 
as you can see there are already things happening. So now go to force one. Select the position maybe around here. I'm not quite sure. And for the depth, choose 0 0.3. We leave this, I think, and maybe this just to zero, comma one five. We have a little try on this one. Change the uh, rotation to point one. Gravity to no, we leave this. I think this is all good. Have a look. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, hit back to the doors composition. Select the left shutter, hit T for reveal the transparency or um, opacity, and drag it down to, I don't know, 25. So, oh, sorry, I forgot the important thing. You have to switch on um, motion blur. This is important. Let's have a quick, quick look. Yeah, actually, the glass could be faster, I think. So hit back. Maybe for the strength, you know, something around 8. Or so. Maybe change it to 10. Sorry. All right, we have this for now. And now we'll have to do the same thing for the right shutter. So once again, create a new solid, call it glass, make it pure white, move it down, make it a 3D layer. Hit G for the pen tool, draw a mask, up here, height, whoopsie, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've drawn the mask on the wrong layer, that's no problem, come on it. X, command V, there you go. Done. So once again we apply the shutter effect. And then, oh, actually I could copy it. Just have to move the point, source point of the source a bit over. Alright, turn motion blow on. T for opacity, maybe 25. So, quick look. Yeah, I think this is quite nice, but I don't think we need the, the 3D turned on for the shadow effect. I'm not quite sure. No difference, so a little like this. Save it. And let's have a look at it in our main comp. And we just make a quick ramp preview of resolution. Okay. That's not too bad. That's good. Okay, so hit back to the doors comp and turn motion blur around for all layers, all your precoms. All right, so let's blow things up. Grab the whole fire clip, drag it down under the doors composition. A little bit more room in here, and let's hide it for a sec. Okay, as you can see, 
This is not quite right. So for the scale, move it up to 240 or so. Okay, we have to move it a little bit. P, move it a little bit to the side. And actually rotate it first around 180 because when you have a close look to the footage, close this down for a sec again, um, play it back. I want those smoke trails or fire flames just under the, under the roof and not on the floor. So I just the reason for rotating it. Once again, hit S for scaling it up. And uh, I don't know. Okay, that's not too bad. We won't need all the stuff happening just until the point it really blows up. So Put it back in and go to the point where we want to start off. Alright, so now it's all about what the timing with the doors. It takes a little long to render here. Excuse me, I switch the shutter effect off for a second. It takes a bit long. This is not quite right. If I switch blending mode to negative multiply, I know. Which is this called in English? I'm sorry. It's just beneath the uh, add and uh, the screen option. I think it's lighten or screen in English. I don't, I don't know. It's the third one in the section here. Let's have a close look. I think our doors are a bit too slow. First of all, grab your camera keyframes and move them 10 frames forward. Go to the doors comp, hit U to reveal all the keyframes. I'm at 10, 10 frames. Move the in points to 10 frames as well. Then let's go to one second. We'll shorten this really, really down. Let's have a look again. Like so. Okay, not quite right. So, this would be your last frame, just a wall of fire. This is where you cut. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's see, how much frames do we have in front of here? One frame, no, that's not too much. Let's have a quick render. It might seem a little fast now, but that's all right. We will slow this down afterwards. Besides this, I'm very happy with this. So, 
go back to our shatter comms, turn the shatter effect back on, and um, All right, that's looking cool. Let's have a look how it looks with, with the glass. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. Um, go to the doors com, hit U. Make sure you are here on the position keyframe at 10 frames. Go to the shatter effect. And at frame 10, make keyframe for the radius. All right? Move one frame forward and make another one with a value zero because the shattering itself is controlled by the radius. So when it goes off the zero, it will shatter. Same thing for the other comp radius, one frame forward, zero. Actually, we can delete those doors right here, this is nothing what we need. So let's have a close look. Bam. I guess you can't see this. That's nice. That's nice. Maybe the glass can a little bit less take. Turn on 35 and switch the blending mode to something like screen or lighten. We'll see. Maybe add. Yeah, that's better. All right. We nearly got it. The only thing we need now is a shock wave. But before we're gonna do this, um, we will uh, wiggle around our camera a bit because when you're blown away by by an explosion, it's not quite possible that the camera stays so so quite nice. So how can we do this? This is a little problem because um, when we just add the wiggle expression on the position it would wiggle around all the time but we just want to start it right off when our explosion goes off. So we have to control our wiggle expression. I think there are several tutorials on this from... I don't know who, who did this but um, I, uh, I will show you. How this works, you just create a new null and under effect go to expression controls and slider control. Duplicate this, hit enter to rename it and call the first one frig for frequency and the other one amp, this is for amplitude. This means frequency how many times in one second will your camera wiggle and the amplitude how much will it wiggle so pretty simple let's go to the keyframe where our camera starts to move around here and select make keyframe for both of the whole, of both of the values now hold alt and um, click on the position stopwatch right Type in wiggle parentheses. Now, with a pick whip, grab the first value, so the frequency, comma, and now, okay, that reaches so far, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, back in here, pick whip, bam, close parentheses, no smiley. <laughs> Now we can control our, our wiggle. So we have a key keyframe here. Maybe move it to the beginning of 
Power Blast. Then go to the position, position keyframe of the camera and type in for the frequency something around I know, 3 and for the amplitude 30. Okay, that's a little too much. Maybe 20. A quick ramp review. That's nice, isn't it? Okay. So go to the very last frame for the fire on the screen. Hit N to um, scale your working area to this section. Right click and trim to work area. That's cool, isn't it? Okay, now let's drag the main comb into a new composition, right, and uh, hit Command K to reveal the uh, comb composition properties, and we will make it around um, maybe eight or let's make it ten, for ten seconds long. Okay. Oh, 10 might be a little bit too much. Now, first of all, um, as you saw a bit ago, this is way too fast. So, we want to put in some kind of bullet time. So, some of those cool matrix effects. To do this, right click on the main composition choose time, add time displacement, I, I think that is an English time displacement, I'm not quite sure. Now you have those two keyframes here. The first keyframe represent, represents the very beginning and the other one the end of your clip. And um, we can change both of them and we also can add new keyframes and then stretch time with them. So maybe add a keyframe about 15 frames, maybe, and go to maybe 21 frames. Now select the both the last two keyframes and pull them down. Sorry, maybe to. 120 or so. Okay. I will show you what's, what's happening now. Okay, we got some weird action going on with our fireball. But we will change this by. hitting this little button here. This is for the frame interpolation, or the, the pixel interpolation. And um, I don't know what's working. I think we leave it at this uh, dotted line. Hit this button over here. Go to the main 2 com. Hit the button here as well. Maybe this is going to be better than uh, I don't know promising anything. That's cool. That helped. Cool. So, like I said before, let's let me switch it off. It takes a little bit longer to render. Um, we want to have a, a shock wave going on. How can we do this? Simply create a new adjustment layer. New adjustment layer and apply a turbulent, turbulent displacement effect. In Germany it sounds a little bit different. So, choose tube, tur turbulent soft. For the strength maybe, let's choose 20. Okay, 
That's not too bad. Let's animate this one. So go to the frame where our explosion starts right here. Now choose the ellipse tool and with the adjustment layer selected, double click. Reveal the mass properties by pressing double M and we feather this out maybe I don't know 75 pixels. And now we do we make a keyframe for the mask expansion and put it way down so you can see nothing anymore. Alright. Now go to the, your last frame, which is around here. And oh no, put it a little bit back in. Yeah, let's try one second. And pull it up. Something around 200. Let's have a quick render. Yeah, maybe it's a little too strong. Put it back to 10. And also pull the keyframe into about 18 frames. Let's render again. It's a little too much still. Maybe five and the size one hundred fifty. And we also want to animate the uh, transparency of this layer. And let's see. Maybe let's go to one second five frames. Need a keyframe, go 10 frames forward and make it zero. It should work pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we nearly made it. I think we just need to color correct this baby. So for this, let's talk on this here. This placement because we will need some adjustments later now. Um, first of all, create a new adjustment layer and select the fast blur. Put it on the adjustments layer, call it fast blur. Check repeat edge, edge pixels and turn it up about 20. And choose for the blending mode overlay. I really like this effect because this um, gives you a really, really nice glow without um, having the render time of, uh, of a glow effect. And uh, it produces very nice highlights and uh, shadow. I like this a lot. Um, crank it down to, I don't know. 60 for now. Okay. Now create another adjustment layer. And for this one, we will take curves. First of all, bring in contrast, just standard S curve. And Reds, the greens, the 
for the blue, let's try something different. That's too much. Blue spooky. Go here. Bam! A little oversaturated, I think. So, now first of all, let's kind of correct the explosion effect. Go in your main com, select the whole file clip, and give it some levels. Okay, go in red, green, bam. Pull in the green highlights and also the blues. So we get rid of this uh, oversaturated look. Go back to main 2. Okay, it didn't help too much. Maybe it's the fast blue turn down to, I don't know, 30. Okay, now um, we check hue and saturation. Drag it on the first adjustment layer and I don't know, minus 20. That's better. Maybe even more. Let's, let's try something, something different. Let's do this. Let's leave it as minus 25. That's not too bad. Alright, now hit uh, Command Y to create another solid, call it Vignette, make it black, okay, and once again double click on the Ellipse tool, flip it, hit F for the feather options, just to create a nice vignette. Expand it, just like so. Okay, we have to set our in point there, or out point there. Okay, I'm not quite happy with the colors yet. Let's see what we can do. Let's no, I'm sorry. Set this one off. It's just try and error until you get something that you like. Okay, maybe drag it beneath the fast player. No, it doesn't help. Oh, that's cool. So we get this blue vignette. I like this. Yay. What do you think? I like this. I really like this. I will leave it here for now. Um, so for render, make sure you switch on the um, uh, motion blur switch and also the pixel interpolation. And let's see if you now main comes everything set up. It's looking okay. All right. Let's give it a render again. Okay, let's have a look.
Okay, we got still some weird stuff going on with the the explosion. Let's see what we can do. Switch this little icon in your main comb from dotted line to the um, straight line, which give this um, pixel movement. That means it uh, shifts the, the pixels around and uh, combinating them in a new way. And also, what I actually forgot is to add a glow effect on our explosion. Drag it on there and fall intensity, I don't know, maybe 1.6. Uh, 0.6, I'm sorry. And turn the radius up. Just like so, that's a little higher. Maybe turn the threshold to 80. Okay. Let's give it one more try. Yeah, that's good. We made it. Damn. Okay. I think we're all good to set it up for a render. And um, I hope uh, you found this tutorial useful in a way. I'm, s I'm sorry for my small language problems. Um, actually, one more thing. Um, there is one way to make this composition even better, and this is when you go, when you are into f in, in Photoshop creating your um, backdrop or backplate, however you call it, or your background floor element. Um, instead of m making it a flat PSD file, you could go to the um, vanishing point filter. So um, you draw it just um, a, a mesh on your on your on your background, and from this mesh on, it calculates um, um, uh, perspective um, composition for After Effects. Uh, Andrew Kramer actually has a tutorial for this on this side. Check it out. And um, the advantage when you're doing it with a vanishing point is you have a three-dimensional um, composition setup. So you have a floor, you have two two walls, you have a roof. Or your ceiling, and um, you can actually set lights into this composition, which is actually really cool. So the doors are flying through through the light, and um, you can also enable then um, your depth of field option, which gives you a, another nice uh, opportunity to um, sh shift the focus uh, during your flying back or something like this. Anyway, um, let's call it a day for now. My name is Oliver for AETATS and um, any comments are welcome. See you later guys.